Welcome back to another video of Your Daily Scales. Now, basically, this is a series where I teach how to play uh, basically all of the scales on the piano, all the major scales, for a beginning piano student. And so, basically, that's what this series is. And it's also a bit of a companion series because I'm going to be teaching some really simple classical music in the future as well. And if that classical piece happens to be in one of these major keys, I'll say to come back if you don't already know how to play this major key and you don't already know the scale very well, to come back and watch one of these videos and practice on the major scale that is in that key and so that's kind of what these videos are used for and basically in every video I teach you a different scale so let's take a look at what today's scale is Today, the scale we're going to be looking at is D major. And D major is kind of cool for a couple of reasons. One of them is it's a very pretty, happy sounding scale, as all major scales are. But another thing that's kind of cool is some of the pieces I'm going to be teaching in the future are going to be some very simple, very fun Bach pieces. And many of them actually are in the key of D major. So if you want to take a look at D major and kind of learn how it goes, learning those pieces will become a lot easier. Now, the cool thing about D major is it's also a very simple scale. We only have two sharps. We have F sharp and we have C sharp. So don't forget to include those when you are playing this scale. Otherwise, it will not be D major. It will be something else completely different. So to play D major, we start off on D in the right hand with our thumb, and we head up to F sharp, just in that order, one, two, three. And once we get up to F sharp, we, cross our, we tuck our thumb under our middle finger to play G. And then once we play G, we then head all the way up to D sharp with our fingers in that order, one, two, three, four, five. And don't forget that four also has an F sharp, uh, has a, <laughs> four also has a sharp on it, and that is C sharp. So once we get up to D, we head back down, remembering, of course, to play the C sharp there. And then once we get back down here to G, we then play, um, we then cross our middle finger over onto F sharp to then get back down to one, which is D. Playing the left hand of the D major scale is also quite simple. We start here on our pinky, and then we head right up here to A, just playing our fingers all in that order. So 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 on D, E, F sharp, G, and A in that order. And then once we get up here to A, we then cross our middle finger over to get B. And then from there, we head up to D, again remembering to play C sharp. Once we get up to D, we then head right back down, starting on one, going then two, three. And then once we get down here to three on B, we tuck our thumb under to get to A, and then we head right back down the scale to D. Very simple. So let me show you how D major works on the keyboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to play each hand by itself, nice and slow. And then I'm going to bring out the metronome and practice it at an even tempo five times through with both hands. And then if you have a piano, a keyboard, really any keyboard instrument at all, you can play along with me at home and uh, get an idea of what practicing the major scale will sound like and feel like. And then, of course, you can practice it on your own as well if you have your own metronome. This is the metronome I have, but if you have any metronome at all, whether it looks like this or it looks completely different, as long as it is a metronome and it makes a nice, even, consistent click sound, that's all that really matters. So let me show you how D major works, and it's really quite simple. We start off with our thumb in the right hand on D, and then we head up to F sharp. And then we tuck our thumb under to G, and then we head up to D. Then we head back down. Then we um, cross our middle finger over to get to F sharp. And that is how the right hand works of the D major scale. Now, you might have noticed I also played the C sharp up there as well, which is the part of the D major scale that was added since we've worked on the G major scale. G major had this one F sharp, but D major also has the F sharp as well as the C sharp up here as well. So that's something to always keep in mind when you're playing the D major scale. If you didn't play the, D sharp, uh, the C sharp, it would sound much different, and you actually wouldn't be playing D major anymore. So you always have to remember to play both the F sharp and the C sharp. Playing the left hand of the D major scale is also quite simple. This time we start on our pinky, on D again, and we head up to A. We just play all of our fingers from the pinky to the thumb on the notes that they should fall on in the D major scale. Then we cross our middle finger over to B, head up to D, head back down, tuck our thumb under to A, and then head back down home to G, uh, to D. So that is how the left hand of the D major scale works. So now let me get the metronome out. I have it set to the speed of 76 beats per minute. And I'm going to play it five times through for you with both hands. And if you want, you can follow along at home. OK, here we go.
So that's how practicing the D major scale would work at home. You can just get out of the metronome and play it through at a nice consistent speed. And once you become comfortable at a slow speed, you can just start slowly increasing the metronome speed. Perhaps you might start at 76 or 66, whatever speed is comfortable for you. And then from there, you just play it through a few times. And if you feel comfortable at whatever speed you're practicing it at, bump it up a few beats per minute and then play it again and repeat and do it over and over again until you're playing it a bit faster. And you're, uh, sometimes you could even just practice until you feel uncomfortable and you feel like you're playing it way too fast, and then dial it back several beats per minute from there until it feels comfortable once again and practice at that speed. So now let me show you the contrary motion. So now let's take a look at the contrary motion. Now what's kind of cool about the contrary motion is that the right hand is exactly the same as the, the part of the major scale we've already looked at, which is the parallel motion. So if you've got the right hand part down in the parallel motion, then you also have the right hand part down in the contrary motion. But the part that's going to be different here is actually going to be the left hand. So let's take a look at that here. We actually start on the high D instead of the low D, because in this part we're moving in opposite directions instead of together. So their hands are moving in opposite directions. So we start here on high D, and then we play two on C sharp and then three on B. And then we tuck our thumb under to get to A. And from A to D is just right down in that order. And we end up with our pinky on low D. From here, from low D, we then head back up to A. And once we get up to A, we then cross our middle finger over to B. And then from there, we go right up to D, remembering, of course, to play C sharps as usual. Again, remember that your thumb should always be on the same notes in the right hand and the left hand. In the right hand, it's always going to be landing on this G. And in the left hand, it's always going to be landing on this A. But what's kind of neat about contrary motion is that your thumbs will actually arrive on the same note at the same time, which is pretty cool. In parallel motion, your thumbs arrived on their respective note at slightly different times, which might be a little bit difficult to do sometimes. So let me show you how contrary motion works down here on the keyboard. And as I said, the right hand of contrary motion is exactly the same as the right hand for the D major scale. So I'm not even going to discuss that. But what I am going to show you how to play is the left hand by itself, because that has a much different feeling to it. Now this time, instead of starting on the low D down here, we actually start on the high D up here. Now, in fact, you actually start playing the contrary motion scale with both thumbs on D, which kind of feels weird. If you wanted to at home, you could practice it an octave apart. But since the music is saying to practice it, start Starting on the same D, that's what I'm going to do here as well. So to start off the left hand contrary motion, you start on D, then you play C sharp with your second finger, then you play B, you tuck your thumb under for one, and then head down to D. Then you head back up to A, then you cross your middle finger over for B, don't forget to play C sharp, and then you're back at D. So now I'm play that five times through with a metronome for you. So that's how playing contrary motion looks and sounds. Now it has a much different feel from playing the D major scale parallel, which is what we've already worked on, where the hands move together at the same direction. And it has a much different feel, and it kind of also helps develop like hand independence, where your hands are, feel like they're doing two different things at the same time. Technically, they're doing the exact same thing at the same time, playing the D major scale, but they are moving in different directions, and it has a much different sound and feel than the standard D major scale in parallel motion. So I just thought I'd show you guys how that works, and it's another way that you can practice on your D major scale. 
Now, one additional thing I would like to mention with D major is its relative minor, which is B. Now, I've already talked before about how to get to the relative minor of any major scale, and I'm going to do that again in this video. Basically, to find the relative minor of any major scale, there's two ways to think about it. You can either find the sixth note of the major scale you're working in, and then that will be the root of your minor scale, or you can head three half steps down from the root of your major scale, which in this case is D, and then that will also be the root of your minor scale. So doing the half steps route first this time, let's go um, from D, so that's one half step down to C sharp, two half steps down to C, and then our third half step down lands us on B. So that is B minor is the relative minor of D major. Now, the other way to do it is to find the sixth note of the major scale. So if we head up six notes from D major, B happens to be our sixth note. So that's two ways of finding the minor scale of any major scale. Now, B minor actually works pretty much the same way as D major does. And basically, the way the minor scale works is it's basically starting the major scale except on a different note. Because as you saw there, it had all the same notes as D major did. It had C sharp, it had F sharp, with everything else being a white note. But it has a much different sound, and you could also play it over a different chord. Well, you might play it over a B minor chord. That's where you'd usually use the B minor scale instead of playing it over a D major scale as well. So that's just kind of another interesting thing. And it has a much different sound, a much darker sound, a much different sound than the major scale, even though it has the same notes. I just wanted to talk about the minor scale as well, because this is another important aspect of practicing on your scales, is to not only play the major scales, but also play the minor scales that go with them. Hopefully you found this video on the daily scales to be uh, informative and helpful for you, whether you're a beginning piano student or someone who knows a little bit about how to play music and they want to become better at what they do. Scales are really helpful for all of that. It doesn't really matter what type of music you want to play or what you know what you want to do with your musical skills, whether you just want to learn more classical pieces and play them, or compose brand new music of your own, or improvise and do play solos. Playing scales and knowing music theory like that really helps you do all of that. And so if you're watching these videos and learning and practicing on your scales every day, it's a really great help. So hopefully you found this video uh, informative and helpful. Like I said, if you want, you can go check out the rest of the video series. And also, if you want to subscribe and hit that button up there on the right-hand side of the screen, make sure to do that because I'm going to have lots of cool uh, videos of really simple classical music from some of these awesome books here from the 1800s. So if that sounds cool and you want to learn how to play some really fun, simple Bach pieces, make sure to stay tuned. Hit that notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.